All right, hello everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on our demo day. We're very happy to have you both here on campus and on our live platforms. So for those of you who are joining us online, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. We would love to know who you are and where you're joining us from tonight. Uh, so for those who don't know me, my name is Manon and I am the events and community associate here at Le Wagon Montréal. And today is a very special day for our students because it is the very last day of their intense nine week journey here. Uh, it is a day of celebration for all of the hard work and dedication that they have put in the projects that you will see in just a minute. But first, let's have a huge round of applause to congratulate and encourage them. So like I said, in a couple of minutes, uh, our students are going to be pitching the projects that they have been working on for the past two weeks. But before we start, I'm going to introduce Le Wagon to those of you who don't know us. So we are an international coding school and we provide our students with the skill sets that they need to upgrade in their career, to change their jobs, or even launch their own businesses in the tech industry. Le Wagon originated in Paris in 2013 and we have now more than 45 campuses around the world and more than 17,800 alumni. And more than 210 startups have been launched by those alumni. So we're very proud of this community and it's part of what makes us the most acclaimed coding bootcamp on review platforms like Course Report and SwitchUp. Like I said, we offer our students uh, technical skills and we do this through two different boot camps. So we have our web development boot camp uh, where they learn the fundamentals of programming and software development. They learn how to code their own web applications and eventually land a job as a full stack developer. We also have our data science boot camp where our students learn the fundamentals of Python, data analysis, machine learning, data production tools, and they're going to get all the, set, uh, all the skills that they need to uh, join a data science team. We offer this in two different formats, if it's going to work. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have a full-time boot camp over nine weeks, uh, and they have classes from Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then for the students that have a job or studies or anything else on the side that prevents them to commit to a full-time boot camp, we do have a part-time boot camp over 24 weeks. And they have classes every Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. So all our students today, they all come from very <laughs> different cultural, professional, and uh, academical backgrounds. Uh, we're very proud to say that more than almost 50% of our students identify as women or non-binary. <laughs> They also come from more than 10 different nationalities, and we're very happy to have most of them on campus, we, but we do have some that join us remotely from the United States, Ontario, and many other places in Canada. So, uh, like I said, they all have different backgrounds. Some have just finished university, some have been working in fields related to tech, while some have been working in fields completely unrelated to tech. They all have very different uh, goals for once <laughs> the boot camp is over, but what they do have in common is the strong motivation to learn new hard skill, uh, new uh, technical skills over a very short period of time. So once this is over, they're going to become developers, data analysis, they might become freelancers, they might work uh, in a tech related role like consulting or product management, or even launch their own startups. But uh, they took uh, the very hard challenge of coding what you're about to see in a very short period of time. So without further ado, I won't be delaying this any longer. I can see that <laughs> you're starting to get a little bit stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I want to invite Benoit to the stage, who is the batch manager of the data science boot camp. And he's going to be presenting the teams and the projects that his students have been working on. So let's have a huge round of applause for Benoit. <laughs> Thanks, Manon. Uh, hello, everyone. So yeah, I'm Benoit. Uh, for the last uh, nine weeks, I had the pleasure to work with these uh, data science students. They put an incredible amount of uh, effort and time uh, into learning data science, how to explore, clear, 
clean tra and transform data into actionable insights and how to implement uh, machine learning models. Um, I have to say that uh, I was very proud to be the manager of this group. Um, it was really nice to see their progression day after day. So uh, thanks to the teachers and TA who made that possible. And uh, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to um, Laura, Kenley, Charles, and Shafkat, who will present Oh My Vault, a solution to help you analyze your energy consumption at home so you can make better choice and save energy. Please. Good evening, everyone. Okay, yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Shafkat. I will be representing my team for Home I Vault. Home I Vault we designed in the past two weeks to address certain issues regarding um, electricity usage, consumption, uh, consumption reports, analysis, and all that. It's an intelligent electricity consumption monitoring system. So uh, in the past year or so, we have been seeing price consumer index rising always. Like it, uh, your grocery bills have been going up your uh, electricity bills as well has been going up too. And since electricity prices have been skyrocketing, uh, both here in North America and in um, EU, name it, you name it, and we are also talking in the global context of uh, diverting energy from places where it's need the le needed the least to places where it's needed the most. We have a term for it, it's called load shedding, and it's a very common thing in Asia. And then we are moving into the future where we are thinking of transitioning into a greener uh, energy uh, platforms. So when I, as a user, I have, uh, when I have my electricity bill in my hand, I go usually to my electricity utility provider's website, I have two options. I can download uh, the bill and I can also download something called the consumer profile. Now this consumer profile comes as a, as a, as a CSV file or a Excel file which is almost unreadable and we took the effort to develop a product that can make this into readable, into a very visually, um, visually summarized form format so that the user can have a greater insight into what their usage looks like. So let's, uh, let's see what our um, app does. So our app is tr all about reducing usage, um, tracking consumption, and then giving feedback to the user to change their habits so that they can have a sustainable electricity bill. <laughs> um, so let's go into the app directly. Let's see what it does. So once when we are faced to, with the app's interface, we can upload the file that we have downloaded from our utility provider, which is the consumer profile. And this consumer profile is, uh, when it, ha it has been uploaded, it will give you, of course, a, a confirmation that it has been uploaded successfully. And then we can select uh, the rooms that we are suspicious about. Like, okay, I am suspicious about my heating room, my kitchen, my laundry, they might be taking too much uh, energy. So let's see how it has, it's been spreading out into, the into my electricity bill. Um, so when we press the analyze button, we let the machines do their magic. And so we now have a breakdown of our electricity consumption by the rooms in our apartment. So here we can see that the data that we have been using was a month for the January month. And we can see clearly that it's a cold month. We are, we are using the largest share of uh, the heating uh, is taking the most electricity. And then we are, we are seeing followed by the laundry room and the kitchen, they are taking that share of the pie for our electricity consumption. Now we can go a little bit further. We can see how it is breaking down into days in the month. So here we are seeing uh, for the month of January, um, like the user, for example, has uh, taken the 
uh, day for Tuesday to do their laundries. We can see a spike in their, the orange uh, part of the graph. We're seeing like spikes in Tuesdays where they're doing their laundry. We can also go a little bit further to see how it is uh, divided across in an hourly basis. Like we can see now that, okay, in, during my dinner time, I'm using my kitchen and of course, what appliances in my kitchen right now? We can go into that detail where you can see, where you can track your uh, appliances even, uh, see their consumption profile and uh, take into account which appliances are using the most energy. So here I'll choose my kitchen and when I'm choosing my kitchen, I'm given the options, maybe let's see, let's choose the dish dishwasher, the microwave, and the oven and see how the consumption is spreading out. So I let, and again, the machine do their magic. And we are seeing like, okay, oven is using more energy and then followed by the dishwasher and the microwave. So what Home I, I Volt uh, enables me to see over, over a certain period of time, I'll go back to the app and change my, I change my usage behavior Maybe I'll use the oven a little bit less, or maybe I'll fine tune my recipes so that I can use the oven a little bit less, maybe let's use the dishwasher a bit less. And that's how we can put actionable insights into the uh, user's hands and give them a better decision making, uh, I did best better decision making ability to uh, make less uh, usage of electricity and of course, uh, uh, lower their electric costs, that's it. So yeah, uh, this is our app. Thanks for Lee Wagon to give us this platform to present. And thanks to my team, Charles. He came up with the idea and it, it was amazing to work with him. Thank you. Good job, congrats. Um, so now, let's discover Dota Dubs, a project that uses statistical models to predict the outcome of competitive esports game. So please welcome Kenny, Jasmine, Anna, and Cassandra. So this team is remote. Here they are. Uh, this is not one of them, which is fine. Um, let <laughs> yeah. That's Suraj, the web dev people. Hello, Siraj. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot hear you, but we can see you. <laughs> yeah, be careful with your fingers. <laughs> okay, that's Anna. Thanks, Anna. All right, guys, sorry about that little hiccup. My name is Kenny Chavez, and I'm accompanied today with Jasmine Zip to welcome you to Dota Dubs, a predictive AI tool to help you win more Dota 2 games. But first, let's talk about esports. Now, today, if I were to ask you what the importance of esports was, some of you might shrug it off. Think of it as a fad or a thing that younger kids like more. But what if I told you that in 2018, an esport event amassed more viewers than the Super Bowl that year at over 100 million viewers? Now, I'm no expert at esports, but what I do know, thanks to Le Wagon's data science bootcamp, is data. And in this instance, the data tells a story. The story that esports is in the rise to become one of the leading entertainment industries of the future. And one of those games is Dota 2. Dota 2 depicts the epic battle between two sides, the Radiant versus the Dire. On each team, five players each jump into battle, showing out their skills and abilities to fight to get the chance to have the victory. At the highest level, these players perfect their performances, which are based on statistics like the amount of kills, objectives taken, and gold earned. Up until now, specialized analysts actually had been tasked with analyzing and commenting these games to make predictions using this very data. This analysis can then be used by the viewer to gain a deeper understanding of the game or for a better, trying to get an edge on their analysis. But then a question was asked, could this analysis be predicted by a computer? Or in other words, are there specific attributes to a game that could be used to predict the winner? Well, that's exactly what a team set out to do. We wanted to use the power of artificial intelligence to make a prediction on a game based on historical data. 
So we set out on a quest to the Dota 2 open API, looking at over hundreds of thousands of rows of information for any clues that might shine light into uncovering this mystery. We analyzed these games, and by comparing and analyzing specific performances of playing during matches, we were able to create a model based on machine learning to make an analyzed guess into who the winner of a match would be. And using this model, we were able to turn a coin flip event probability of 50% to a model with an accuracy of over 66%, gaining a 16% increase in probability along the way. And now, let's take a look at an exclusive demo of Dota Dubs, guided by none other than Jasmine Zip. Thank you, Kenny. All right, so when you enter Dota Dubs, first thing you'll do is you'll be prompted to choose your role. So there are two roles available here, player and better, and I'll go through both of them. So let's start with player. Let's imagine that you are an avid Dota 2 player and your friend challenges you to a match. Now they're convinced that they're a better player than you are, but you're not so sure. So you wanna take a look at your odds first before you accept their challenge. You'll enter in your account ID and your friend's account ID. And let's take a look at the results. So what we're doing here is we're requesting from our model to give us a prediction of the outcome of the game. Unfortunately, in this case, it looks like your friend is a better player than you, and uh, they are predicted to win this game. Now, for some players, that might be enough information. They don't want to know the numbers or anything to get in their head and ruin their gameplay. But if you do want to get a little bit more details, you can open this box and show me the stats. Here you'll see your own statistics of those uh, abilities that Kenny mentioned. So your kills per game or your XP, your gold, things like that averaged over your recent matches. So you can look at those and assess and say, hmm, maybe I'm not collecting as much gold as I should. So I'm gonna work on that before I accept this challenge from my friend. You can also find some numeric data down at the bottom if you'd prefer to look at it that way. But what if you're someone like me, who is not a very good Dota 2 player, but I'd like to make a little wager on the side. Then you're going to select the role better. Once again, you are going to enter in two account IDs and make a request from our model. So it's going to predict once again, who's going to be the winner of this matchup between these two players. We're given a little bit more information as a better, so here we're told once again that player two has a higher probability of winning and we're given the percentage, uh, the predicted percent probability that that player will win. Now this is great if you are a better because if you're told, for example, that player two has a 51% chance of winning, then that tells you that these players are probably pretty evenly matched and you might not wanna bet that one or the other is going to win. But if you're given a percentage like 95%, then you can say, okay, there's uh, one player who's much better than the other, and it's probably a pretty safe bet. You're also shown some statistics down here as well uh, that compare the different abilities between the two players. So you can look at, for example, uh, in this case, player two has significantly more last hits than player one. So you might wanna make a wager on that as well. So you uh, bet not only on the outcome of the game, but on who is going to make more last hits in the game or who's going to make more kills or who's going to collect more gold. Once again, you can find the numeric data down at the bottom. So that's Dota Dubs, and we're really excited about this project. We think that it has a lot of potential, and we just wanted to outline a couple of a few ways that uh, we think this can move forward and be incorporated into the world of esports. One is um, looking at team games. So as Kenny mentioned, Dota 2 is played with 10 players, five versus five. Now, what we've shown you here is just one player versus one player, but it would be really great if we, uh, moving forward, um, looking at the five different players versus five different players and seeing what happens when you swap out one player for another, how greatly that affects the outcome. That sort of leads into our other potential um, future uh, goal for this project, which is to incorporate a manager role. Now with professional esports teams, most of them have a manager who is not a player, uh, but they're responsible for assembling the team and um, choosing what roles each player plays within the game. We would love to see a manager uh, create a team of five players and then see what happens if you swap out one of those players for say an alternate or a new member to the team. Another um, future lane that we can see ourselves moving is to incorporate live updates into this, into this um, model. So what we've shown you already here is a prediction based on a player's previous stats. 
but we think it would be really cool to incorporate live uh, updates as the game is going on so that if a player is playing particularly good one day, that can affect the, out the predicted outcome of our model and um, the bettors can change their bets based on the live game as it's playing. So this is Dota Dubs. We're really excited about this project. Um, thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Amazing. I think you will be rich soon. It's really nice. Um, so thanks, Data people. Um, now I would like to, invi to invite Stefan to the stage, batch manager to the web dev bootcamp batch 1038. We will be presenting the teams and the project that his students have been working on the last two weeks. So let's have a huge round, a huge round of, applaud of applause for Stefan. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, uh, it was 1038 for the, uh, for the web dev, 1058 was for the data. Um, amazing projects. I'm always surprised when we see uh, the, uh, the demo for the data science. It's something that we in the web dev, we do not explore really, and it just blows my mind every time. It's really, really cool. So. Um, the same thing as for the, the data science in the last two weeks, and actually it's really the last nine days because today was a no-code day. Um, the, uh, the batch in seven different teams uh, created their own projects, which uh, they're going to show you tonight. And it's, to me, it's always amazing to see the progress of the students from day one. Uh, for those of you who code, uh, who know a little bit about code, uh, uh, first questions that we have, so the first week is how do we assign a value to a variable? What's a method? And then in the last two weeks, they're just flying through rails and they're building products and pushing to production. So they really had for the final projects to come up with an idea first and then pitch their ideas to the whole group and then seven of those ideas were picked. Then those teams were formed and then they had to prototype the thing. They had to uh, imagine it, design the tech specs, code the, the app also, and finally push it to production so that the whole world can see the apps. All, everything that you'll see tonight, you can actually go on the internet and experience those apps. And finally, the last days, uh, to prepare their pitch so that tonight they can uh, wow you with their, uh, their products. They really did an amazing job. I'm very, very happy. I think you'll be impressed also with what you're going to see tonight. Uh, so first up, we will see uh, our remote team. Um, so they built local, an app to uh, fill your next trip with l uh, incredible local experiences. So let's welcome Siraj, Ellen, Nea, and Alex, uh, and let's experience local. Okay, all set now. Just shoot me a thumbs up, and I'm ready to go. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Rob, and I'm in this coding boot camp. Uh, it's really tough, but it's really rewarding. And I'm about to graduate, and I want to celebrate with a trip. Here's the problem, though. I want to go to Paris, but I hate travel blogs. You waste hours looking through sites from 1990 with ideas that don't really fit my interests. Thankfully, a friend introduced me to Local. It's an app where I can scroll through vacation experiences in different cities created by people from there and actually matched to my interests. This is great because I want to find some authentic food and see a few sites, but I'm going with my partner and she wants to see the more natural parts of the city. I like to eat, she likes to hike. All I need to do is save both of our preferences. So let's get started. Uh, I think I'll choose nature, hiking, scenery, dancing. We'll definitely get some nightlife. I know I want to see some art. And of course, dining. All right, and I got to add a trip. I think I'm going to leave the moment that this boot camp ends and I'm going to go to Paris. So I'm going to set that trip for December 9th uh, and I'll go until the 13th. And let's check out what Paris has to offer. 
Oh, yeah. So I'm a huge art buff. I think I'm definitely going to go to the Louvre. So I'm just going to pop in there and uh, add that to my trip. Let's see what else they got. Curious about Vasily Say. Um, wow, it says it's inside the hollow of a bridge. Uh, you know, I wonder if the roof leaks. I just have a lot of questions about this. It looks super cool. Um, but let me check out some reviews. Uh, okay, cool. So I see the food is pretty expensive. Uh, I want to ask the local who posted this a little bit more. So I think I'm going to message Elon. Is it really that expensive? Any good French food alternatives in the area? Hopefully she'll get back quick and I can make a little bit more of a plan for my trip. Ah, okay, so she says it's a little expensive. Hmm. Oh, great. So there are local markets as well. I'm going to make a note of that, and that was super helpful. And that reminds me, I already took a trip to Barcelona, uh, and I want to post um, some reviews to help people there. I'm going to go back in, and it was definitely La Sagrada Familia. Loved it. Amazing cathedral. But you know what? I'm afraid of crowds. I'm afraid of clowns and crowds. So, you know, I just got to warn people off. Get there early. Uh, to avoid the hordes. And uh, one other thing that I'm remembering, you know, uh, they don't take cash there. It's kind of old school. So maybe bring 20 to 30 euros. So in spite of that, in spite of the issues, the crowd size, I'd give it a five out of five. And I'm going to leave my rating. Awesome. And that reminds me, you know, I'm from New York. I love to travel, but I love it here, too, uh, so much that I think I want to create my own experience. Uh, and whenever you go to New York, it's hard to get a good meal for cheap. Uh, but I know a place. It's Mamoon's Falafel. And it's fantastic. It's down in the West Village, so it's New York. And uh, I got to tell people, you know, get the falafel. It's only $5. Uh, but... But you got to stay away from the hot sauce. Last time I ate it, uh, the next day at work was hellish, you know, suffering. So just avoid that hot sauce like the plague. I think I've even got a cool image I can post. And then I remember it's uh, at 119 McDougal Street. And I'm just going to tag this one as a dining experience. And let's post that. And uh, hopefully I can go in there and maybe get some replies from anybody who might be interested in it and help them out a little bit. Cool. So this guy, Alex, asked, are there any performance venues by, nearby? What about the hot sauce? Okay, Alex, the hot sauce, stay away. I'm telling you, seriously. And if you want something else to do, go to the Comedy Cellar. It's classic. And it's right next door. So this feels great. I'm glad I can help Alex out. He seems like a super cool guy. Hopefully I'll get to meet him someday. Uh, and you know what? Traveling just got way better for me. I can avoid all the, all the headaches of finding things to do. Um, so if you're like me and you like to travel, but you don't like travel blogs and you want to find culture, go local. Amazing job. Good job, Suraj. Good job, Alex, Nea, Helen. Very, very nice. Um, next up, we have a plan for you. So an app to help you plan your wedding without hassles and without stress. So let's welcome Olivia, uh, Anthony, and Anne Biel. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia, and I am finally getting married in the month of March of next year. It's come the time to organize my guest list as well as my seating arrangement. However, I come from a big Italian family, and you probably already know how Italians are when their kids are getting married. They plan to invite half the world, and that could be extremely stressful when organizing tables for a lot of guests. Luckily, 
A friend of mine referred me to plan for you an automated stress-free seating chart generator based on your guests' preferences. So let's dive right in and see how it works. My lovely partner to be is Mr. Anthony Marcarella, and we're getting married at the beautiful Windsor in Montreal on March 25th, 2023. This is the third time I changed my wedding date due to COVID, so hopefully it's really over now. The first thing I'm gonna do is create my guest list. So I already got a head start and created a, and created a list on Excel, so I'm just gonna import that straight in. Oh my God, I completely forgot. My mom called me the other day, told me I absolutely need to invite Rick to my wedding, so I'm just gonna add him in. Sorry, I also forgot to include his last name in there, Rick Saracino. <laughs> you know what? My uncle Dominic thinks it's more important to go on his Europe trip than come to my wedding, so I'm just gonna remove him. <laughs> now that my guest list is complete, I'm just gonna go ahead and design my invitation cards. Wow, look at all of these beautiful designs. I'm gonna choose something simple, and since my bridesmaids are gonna be in navy blue, I'm gonna go with this one to match the theme. So I created my guest list, I designed my invitation cards, and lastly, I just need to send all of my invitees the invitations. And now that that's done, I can sit back and relax while I wait for my guests to answer. Hey everyone, I'm Josephine. And my cousin Olivia just sent me an email with her invitation to her wedding. So I'm gonna open that up. What a beautiful invitation card. <laughs> I'm gonna RSVP, I cannot wait. So I'm gonna find my invitation card with my name, Josephine, and I'm definitely gonna be attending her wedding. I'm gonna choose to sit with Massimo and Chloe. And like I said before, I cannot wait for this big day. It's Olivia again. I'm just gonna check in, see if any of my guests responded to my wedding, and look at that, all 40 guests are coming. This is gonna be one big, exciting wedding. Let me see what Plan For You has generated for me. So I'm gonna choose to have five people per table, and a total of eight tables were generated. Josephine insists that she sits with Massimo and Chloe, so I'm just gonna double check. They're all sitting together. Josephine's gonna be super happy. I'm happy. Plan for You has saved me quite some time, and I would definitely recommend this to anybody getting married. Thank you. Great job, great job, great pitch, amazing. Congratulations. Um, next up, we have last minute date. So, built by Hugo, Eva, Giovanni, and Jessica. So, you want to go see uh, an event and you want to find true love? Last minute date is for you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Hugo. Um, as you may know, this is Friday night. As you may not know, I have nothing to do tonight. And as you may not know either, I would really like to go out for an event. But I really don't feel like going out alone. Do you know what I mean? So lucky me, I found last minute date. Um, so first, let's see uh, what's happening for tonight. And since I don't have time to go to Toronto, we'll be looking for just Montreal. But I'm not sure what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for tonight. Um, a concert, um, a play maybe. You know what? I'm in the mood for some sporting events. Um, I've been longing to witness some high intensity event. Uh, I don't know, I'm looking for sweats, I'm looking for effort. Uh, I wanna feel like I'm in a, in a gladiator arena and I will look at this. This is exactly what I'm looking for, a ping pong tournament. I mean, <laughs> And by the looks of it, it looks pretty promising because <laughs> the greatest ping pong player in the world will be at the Olympic Stadium. I need to get a ticket, so let's buy a ticket. But okay, so this is done, but let's calm down and let's see who is going to that event because remember that that is the goal of the event. Um, I have two soul mail alerts, it's pretty good. The ladies are good looking, but not quite my type. I, I'm sure there must be someone more suited or I don't know. And 
Well, well, Eva, 23, she's exactly my type, but, but we have nothing in common, really. I mean, oh, come on, I mean, and I shouldn't even try to reach out for her. Well, 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 <laughs> I've got a plan. So I'm going to start first with a little message. Uh, let's write, uh, hey, are you a fan of ping pong as well? Yeah, that should do it. I'm, I'm really confident. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I can just feel it. She's the love of my life. I mean, she's got to, I got to reach out for her. And, I mean, look at her. She's got a hat. I got a hat. What else do we need more? So, like I said, I got a plan. If I'm looking at her interest, um, she likes boxing, dance, electronic music, magic, comedy, opera, and rock. All right. Got it. Now, I need to tweak a little bit my own interest in my profile <laughs> so, so I can get a better matching score with her. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Because if I don't do this, she will not be, uh, well, interested in going out with me. She will ignore me. I don't want that. So, I mean, now that I'm setting everything in order, I'm remembering everything, it's ready to go. I gotta make sure, though, that I have a ticket in my wallet, because once I reach the Olympic Stadium, I can show this at the entrance, I can get in, I can see I have my tickets, I'm ready to go. Now, I'm curious about my new matching score with Eva. And, well, <laughs> look at this, uh, look at that. <laughs> Soul mail alert, just the way it should be. Well, folks, you know, in life, you gotta work with destiny a little bit, so she knows that you know, we are, we are soulmates deep down in our hearts. So it, that, that's pretty much, uh, so if we want to, I'm pretty sure that I receive an answer by now from, from, from her. And well, look at this, destiny, am I right? <laughs> Hi Hugo, my dad is playing tonight, I have no choice to go, but I, want, I went to your profile and I see you really like magic, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I love magic, of course. So. <laughs> Let's just answer something and be, be a gentleman, be polite, and say, yeah, I love magic, of course. Do you want to go to that ping pong tournament together? I'm pretty uh, confident that I'll get an answer, so pretty right away. And if I just be patient and I, uh, I don't know, I can just feel it that she will answer me. And if I just, mm, I'd love to. <laughs> well, look at this. Well, I chose an event and I found a soulmate. Pretty easy, right? Thanks, last minute date. <laughs> Great, great, great job. Great job, team. Great job, Hugo and Jessica, for the driving and pitching, too. So one thing that I always, uh, that's always at the back of my mind is if I get lost in the woods, would I be able to survive and find stuff to eat? Turns out you don't even need to be lost in the woods. You can find plenty of stuff to eat around in the city. Forager is going to help you find those caches. So this was built by Vinto, Elise, and Richard. Welcome them to the stage. Good evening, everyone. My name is Richard, and uh, I used to be super into foraging in my hometown. I knew all of the local spots. My friends would give me all of their updates on the new stuff that they would find. But uh, I recently just moved to Montreal, and I don't know any of those spots anymore. I haven't been out foraging since, and I've just been living off of store-bought mushrooms. Honestly, <laughs> I cannot handle any more creminis, you guys. <laughs> but fortunately, a friend recently told me about Forager. And right away, the map displays all these caches in my area where other local foragers have found delicious wild food. So I'm going to start by checking out this cache on the, the plateau on the mountain Mont Royal, because it's not too far from my place, and I'm planning to go there for a walk tomorrow anyways. Oh, that's really cool. It's juniper berries. I love juniper, and I've actually been planning on learning how to make gin. Now, I have no idea how to make gin, but I think it could be a really fun challenge, and I think I'm up for it. 
So I'm just going to add this cache to my collection so I don't forget about it, and I can find it again later. Now, in my collection, I also have a cache that a friend sent to me of some elm, uh, some elm oyster mushrooms down in La Salle. Now, I don't know too much about elm oysters, so I'm just going to learn a little bit more about them. Well, that's really cool. It says here that they are pretty similar to regular oyster mushrooms. They tend to be grown commercially, but you have to cook them before you eat them. Now, that doesn't worry me too much. I'm definitely down to do that, and especially because I can't handle any more cruminis, so I will take one of these for sure. I'm definitely going to add this one to my collection as well. Now, thinking about that cache that my friend sent me, it was all the way in La Salle. That is way too far. I'm not going to head down there anytime soon, so I'm just going to remove that one from my collection and not worry about it. Hopefully, I'll find another cache of Elm Oysters sometime soon. Now that my collections are curated and updated, I'm ready to go out for my foraging on the mountain Mojoyal. So I just got back from foraging at the, at the mountain. I was able to find that cache of juniper berries. I'm super hyped. They look really, really great, and uh, I got a whole bushel of them. So I'm really excited to make some gin for the first time this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a fun little challenge. I was also fortunate enough to stumble across some chanterelle mushrooms and some chicken of the woods mushrooms. So I'm going to add a cache of these so that other people can find and enjoy them as well. Now, I love chanterelles and chicken of the woods. They are super delicious mushrooms, a little bit nutty, a little bit woodsy, kind of a buttery flavor, and I think they're going to be really great for a stir fry that I'm going to make for my partner this weekend. I also snapped a bunch of photos. I got some shots of the chanterelles. I got some shots of the chicken of the woods, and uh, they're going to look great. This way, other foragers will be able to know exactly what to look for when they find my cache. Oh, cool. My cache is up. It's my first cache. I'm pretty excited. And uh, I really can't wait for other people to enjoy these mushrooms as well. Now, sometimes when I'm out foraging, I don't actually find what I was looking for. And sometimes I don't find anything at all. But I still like to log what I've been up to and keep track of my progress and my activities for the day. Fortunately, this time I was able to find that cache of juniper berries. So I'm going to attach that cache to this log, log entry. I was also able to find those mushrooms, the chanterelles, and the chicken of the woods mushrooms. What I didn't tell you guys was that I had to fight through a family of raccoons to get them. <laughs> you know, the big fat Montreal raccoons. <laughs> I was victorious, and uh, I was able to snap a shot of one of the little rascals as he ran away. But with, my, with the spoils of my victory, I'm going to make that really delicious uh, stir fry this weekend. Pretty excited about that. Let's, go, let's just go look at my profile page. <laughs> uh, sometimes I do get nostalgic. I like to look back over my logs, see what I've been up to over the past few weeks, really sort of uh, reminisce. And it makes me feel really great to sort of see the progress that I've made over the last few months. And it really helps me just want to get back out there and keep foraging and uh, finding delicious local wild food. Thanks so much, Forager. Great job, great job, team. Um, next up, uh, any Scrabble players in the crowd? No? <laughs> All right, Martin, Martin's an avid uh, Scrabble player. So Pairwise, built by Jackson, Arstan Beck, Andrew, and Annabelle, is not only for Scrabble players, but for Scrabble tournament organizers. So let's welcome Annabelle and Jackson to the stage. I must admit, I am an avid Scrabble player, <laughs> if no one else is. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackson, and I've been a Scrabble player for over 10 years. But more recently, I passed the test, and I'm now a certified Scrabble director by the North American Scrabble Players Association. And uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You see, the problem is, the problem is I've been running all these tournaments, and so far, running Scrabble tournaments is a lot of this. A lot of papers, a lot of organization. My life's really difficult. But luckily, this scrappy young group of coders from Montreal created Pairwise, and now I can run Scrabble tournaments super easily. So easily, I can even play in them myself while I'm directing them. And as a matter of fact, I'm actually running a tournament right now as we speak in Montreal. I'm running one in Oshlaga, and we actually have one round remaining. But I want to see how everyone's doing so far. 
and we see I'm in second place. I have four wins, three losses, not bad, but Marlon Hill is ahead of me right now with five wins. And uh, we actually have the final results in. Everyone submitted them to me, so I'm going to go input their scores as the director. And for round eight, the last round, I played Lisa Odom. She squeaked out a win against me, unfortunately. It happens. You know, you can't complain about it. But, I mean, I do, but you can. <laughs> and uh, Meanwhile, Marlon Hill, he lost to Cesar in a very close-fought battle. And now that we have all of the final scores inputted, I want to see the final results of my tournament. See who won. And it looks like Marlon Hill won with five wins, three losses. Now, I fell to third place. I, I don't really like that. I, my rating fell as well because I lost my last game. I, I feel like something's wrong there. You know, I put a lot of work into my Scrabble game. I'm an avid player, after all. I want to go see the, the, the pairings again. Something must be wrong. I see round two, Marlon scored 501. I, I don't know about that. I think I, I scored the 501. Um, <laughs> and come to think of it, I think Marlon scored 200 points. I think that sounds about right. That, that looks more like it. Now, now that all the scores are actually in, I want to see the real final results of my tournament. And uh, would you look at that? I won my own tournament. <laughs> Congratulations to me. I'm going to go uh, give myself a cash prize and celebrate all night. But um, before I do that, I actually have one more tournament I'm running in a few weeks in Toronto. And I just want to get all my ducks in a row, do some organization. So I want to see all my upcoming events. These are not mine. These are all across North America, so I want to find mine. It's in Toronto, it's 21 games, and I'd like to start this event because to get you know all my organization out of the way. We're going to use the Swiss pairing system. It's a very great algorithm, pairs people together who you're doing well, and we're going to have three winners for this tournament. So now that my tournament's been created, I would like to see who's registered so far. And I'm, of course, I'm playing, I got to play, and we got a couple friends in, Seth and Chloe, but I see a problem here, which is Chloe has a buy in her first round. We have an odd number of players, and so someone has to sit out each round. But uh, I actually uh, just got a, a text from my friend Nigel. He's agreed to play in the tournament, so I'm going to add him right in. And hopefully this evens us out. We won't have a buy. And so Nigel's a pretty good Scrabble player as far as they go. His name is Nigel Richards, and his rating is 2204. And he's going to play in Division One along with myself and everyone else in the same group. And his cross tables ID, it's tattooed on me somewhere. It's 6003. We all know it. And now that Nigel is in, you see he's at the top of the list. And uh, he's the best player, so what can you do? And going back to my scoreboard, I feel like hopefully there's no buys. And it looks like there's no buys. Everyone is good to go. And I must say, I'm really excited to run this tournament in a couple weeks, all thanks to Pairwise. Uh, you can leave them there. Oh, you got help, plenty of help. Congratulations to the team. So if you're, in a, if you're not... <laughs> so, so if you don't mind fiddling the numbers a little bit, Pairwise is amazing. Um, next up, we have Climark with Lissandra, Jenny, and Nifemi, an app for rock climbers to help you track your progress and also get uh, recommendations on the routes you should try next. So, Jenny, Lissandra, welcome to the stage. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Lissandra, and I like outdoor rock climbing. But to this day, rock climbers still use this to navigate through routes and log their climbs. It's outdated, inefficient, and come on, it's 2022 and you still use a book. So we want to scrape the whole book idea, scrap the whole book idea completely. And that's when I discovered Climbark. So I have been using Climbark for about a week now in my stereo Ontario, visiting a friend. And let me quickly look at my stats. So currently I have four climbs and the highest grade I completed is a 5.9. I did try a 510A, but it was too hard. But to be fair, that definitely was not a 510A. It was way harder, so I retreated that. But today is a good day. I feel great, so let's go climbing. So the nearby areas do look nice, but we heard that Kenora area has a lot of good routes to offer. So let's just check that out. Hmm, a lot of cool climbs. But you know what? I feel like challenging myself today. And the good thing about Climbark is that it recommends your routes according to your level. 
So I want to climb a 510A this time and successfully complete it. And Traverse Climb looks interesting. So let me just read more about that. So it's a true adventure. It's hard to think of a more apt name for this route other than Lycan Sweeper, Get Stretched Out, Is It Over, and Scary Fun. Well, I did say I was up for a challenge, so let's do it. So let me just look at the route. So I think I'll have about four to five bolts, and then I'll have the traverse to the left. So one fun fact is that traverse climbs are actually really fun, but also hella scary, because you constantly feel like you're about to fall off. But hey, again, challenge myself. So let's do it. Let's go climb. But before that, I want to see if there are other tips left by my fellow rock climbers to help me out. So Nefime did say that beware of poison ivies, because well, you know, there's a lot there. Good thing I'm wearing my long pants. Komezu also said to be careful of the tricky corners as it's easy to lose your footing there. Well noted, thank you for that. So let's climb. On belay, belay on. Climbing, climb on. So here, climb, climb, climb. <gasps> I did it! Okay, that was very challenging, but fun. And that's my first 510A successfully completed. I was also feeling a bit ballsy, so I did take pictures at the top. So let me just add that in. All right, but now I want to help my fellow rock climbers because at the top, it was actually quite slippery, so it was a bit polished. So let me just add that in as a tip so that they will also be able to see it. All right, there we go. Now let's check my stats again. And yes, a 510A. I've successfully completed a 510A. And let me just look back at my log and add that in because of course, I want to be able to remember that. It's my diary. So yes, completed it. And these pictures at the top actually do look nice, and it was pretty cool up there. So yeah. But hmm, better than Urza. So I did remember attempting that a week ago, but I did complete it two days ago. So let me just change that and update that real quick. There you go. OK. So tomorrow, my friend wants to climb another area called the Eyeball. And it's somewhere near Blind River. So let's just look it up. OK. Thunder Bay region. OK, let's go. Let's see all the routes in that Thunder Bay region area and see what it has to offer. All right. OK, so Thunder Bay has a lot of stuff to offer. But you know what? I'm not feeling any of it. Although she didn't mention that there was a 5-6 climb that she was talking about in the middle of nowhere, just a pillar stacked up there, so I want to search it up. She forgot the route name, so let me just quickly look up 5, 6 in the areas. And hmm, the canine does sound like it. A pillar stuck up right in the middle of nowhere with one route stuck on that, so there you go. I'm going to climb that next time, and thanks, Climbark, for making rock climbing and logging, logging climbs more efficiently and easier. Thank you. Good job, amazing. Um, last but not least, <laughs> last but not least, we have the app built by Etienne, Melissa, uh, Kevin, and Reed, which is Drink Me, which will suggest to you uh, cocktail recipes according to the ingredients that you already have. So, Reed and Kevin, please take the stage. Howdy, everybody. Uh, my name is Reed, and uh, some of you may know, but I used to be a bartender. Uh, unfortunately, I have just spent the last three months learning nothing but code, and I completely forgot how to make cocktails, which uh, puts me in a bit of a sticky situation when my friends want me to whip something up for them. Thankfully, one of my coworkers recommended me this great app called Drink Me, and I figured I'd check it out, so let's get started. Like any responsible app with controlled substances, it's making sure that I'm above the legal age to consume, and I, I think I fit the, uh, the bill, so we'll say I'm 18. And uh, I'm going to select some ingredients right away and see what this app has to offer. I was uh, checking my back bar, and I've got a dusty bottle of uh, dark rum laying around, and I think I've got some pretty nasty limes that I should probably use up. So let's see what we get uh, just with those ingredients for now. And uh, oh, would you look? Look at that, a Cuba Libra. Let's investigate further. 
all right, dark rum, we've got that. Limes, I've got that. And I'm sure I can find a Coca-Cola at a Depanard. Fill the glass, add the rum, bada bing, bada boom. My drink is ready. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And now, uh, you know, the, uh, the wheel is greased. And I'm feeling like I might be a little ambitious. I might have myself a second cocktail. And I'm going to get a little fancy with it this time. So uh, instead, I noticed that I had a bottle of brandy laying around. I'm not a big brandy guy, but maybe in a cocktail it'll do me good. Uh, and I used up my lime, but I did find a lemon. So I'm going to use that instead. And uh, I've got a questionable bottle of uh, simple syrup in the back of my fridge that I should probably not use. But uh, what? the heck and uh, I was on a real margarita bender last weekend so I've got some triple sec laying around as well and would you look at that we get a between the sheets my dad used to tell me about these all the time uh, it looks like it's equal parts brandy rum triple sec pretty easy you would just uh, put everything in the shaker bada bing bada boom I've got my second cocktail and geez oh man was that tasty but now I'm kind of curious how many drinks am I working with with this drink me app so uh, I'll check out the full list here and uh, holy smokes, over 500 cocktails. I don't think I'm going to exhaust my options anytime soon. We've got some pretty creative names. Uh, some of those cocktails from the 80s have uh, very uh, questionable titles. And uh, I think I'd be interested in that 50-50 uh, there. It's uh, looking a little promising to me. And we've got uh, vanilla vodka, Grand Marnier, orange juice. Seems pretty easy. But uh, I'm going to keep this one in my back pocket for later. For now, though, I need to plan out my next poker party with the fellas. And uh, I know they're a bit of a cocktail snob. I don't want to pick a bad drink, so I'm going to check out the popular drinks, those hot drinks, make sure I'm making a crowd pleaser. Old fashions, Long Islands, no thanks. Ooh, dry martini. We could have a little Casino Royale evening, if you know what I'm saying. Gin, dry vermouth, olives, nice and simple. Uh, pretty easy instructions as well, but I don't have any dry vermouth, so I'm going to have to run over to the SAQ before next weekend to grab some of that. But I am very excited for my Casino Royale party, shaken, not stirred. Um, and uh, for tonight, actually, now that uh, we've completed our uh, coding boot camp, we're going to be going out, we're going to go and celebrate, and I want to make sure that the bartender at the bar I go to is worth his salt. So I'm going to put him to the test, and I'm going to try my luck and see if he can make me a drink here. Oh, the Garibaldi Negroni. Very exciting. Gin, Campari, orange juice, garnished with an old uh, orange peel. I'm not really sure I'm into that. So I'm going to try it again, see if they can make me something a little fancier. Ooh, coffee, vodka. Now we're talking. I have been drinking a lot of coffee here at Le Wagon, but I didn't have much vodka in it. Uh, maybe it's time to change that. So uh, I'm going to get my local bartender to whip me up one of those when I go out later tonight. I've got my cocktails ready for next weekend, and it's all thanks to Drink Me. Let the good times roll. Thank you very much. Congratulations, everyone. You did an amazing job. Let's have a huge round of applause. So now we're going to be giving out the diplomas. And up first, we have our remote students who are going to be getting them by mail. But let's still congratulate them. So we have Hélène Buffet, <laughs> Suraj Gopal, <laughs> Hannah Gunter, Cassandra Long, and Alex Trimper, and Jasmine Zip. Now I'm going to invite Benoit back to the stage. He's going to be giving out the diplomas to the data science batch. So up first we have Kenny Chavez. <laughs> Charles Gérard. Jean. <laughs> Shafkat Rahman. <laughs> uh, 
Laura Sevostianova. And now I'm going to be inviting Stefan back to the stage to give out the diplomas to the Web Development Match. <laughs> Melissa Benoen Garde. <laughs> Lissandra Bautista. <laughs> Anthony Bormans. Reed Copeland. Yeah. Hugo Dulac. Yeah. Etienne Forcé. Vinto Huang. Yes. Jessica Iacovozzi. <laughs> Han Byul Kwan. Nea Nock. <laughs> Nifemi Oyekunle. Giovanni Reed. <laughs> Kevin Reyes. <laughs> Annabelle Roger. Eva Roux. Yeah. Jackson Smiley. Yeah. Olivia Tangretti. Andrew Weaver. Weaver. <laughs> Richard Young. <laughs> Arsten Zoloshu. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> and of course, this couldn't have happened without Le Wagon team, who has worked really hard in the background to make sure that every student has been supported throughout the whole boot camp and has had the best time possible. So have, let's have a huge round of applause for Le Wagon team. <laughs> So 
for all of the TAs and the teachers for sharing your passion. You have been there for them since day one, and these projects could not have happened without you, so thank you. Yeah. And also, thank you to our volunteers tonight for helping us out. Even though I only started uh, working here a couple of weeks ago, uh, it has been an amazing experience working with all of you, and I look, uh, I look forward to the many more weeks to come. And I want to thank all of the students for always being so positive and energetic. You are amazing, and although you're already leaving us so soon, it has been a pleasure to meet all of you and to get to know you over the past few weeks. So thank you for being so welcoming. Before we move on to the next part of the evening, uh, I just want to make sure that you know that we have some boot camps coming up next session. So we have three in web development. One, uh, it's a full-time on campus in English, a full-time in French uh, remote, and a part-time in English hybrid. And for the data science, we have a full-time in English in remote and a part-time in English hybrid. And it's not too late to sign up. We also have some events coming up. So we have our workshop uh, on how to create great pull requests with Cumogen, December 8th at 1.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we have a French workshop where you're going to learn the basis of JavaScript in less than two hours. It's December 13th at noon. Uh, we have a code and pizza workshop in Quebec, uh, but also remote, uh, and it's going to be the 14th of December at 6 p.m., and you're going to learn how to code your very first web page. And of course, we have our second demo day for the full-time uh, de web development batch in French and the part-time web development batch. So if you want to discover some new projects, please join us December 16th at 6 p.m. <laughs> All right, so you can also follow our social media and our meetup page to uh, be kept updated on our upcoming events and to sign up for them. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank uh, everyone who's online. Uh, have a great night.